I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to show you this preparation because this preparation could easily serve as a pressed ceramic preparation. It, you know, it, it has the necessary features. It has uh, taper, which you can see all the way around. It has um, exit angles or angles of departure that are approaching 90 degrees or close to it. It has adequate bulk in the axial wall area, the width of the gingival at least being a millimeter. It's probably closer to 1.2 to 1.4 in this area. Uh, the depth is more than two millimeters. So it's all there, but it's going to be difficult to mill this. This could be pressed. Uh, the technician could wax this up easily and could press this. But there's some irregularity on the gingival, some little bumps that go up and down. And then there's some sharp edges in here, a sharp edge here and a sharp edge here that might be difficult for the milling burr to get into those areas. So I'm going to go ahead and spend just a few more minutes modifying this preparation so it's maximally successful utilizing the milling technologies also. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to smooth this transition over here. And I think in the, for this particular application I'm going to use a 88 81012, which is the same burr in shape, but it's a finer grit. So it uses a 30 micron grit uh, burr rather than a much more coarse grit. And so we're going to just use this burr to go ahead and round off that sharp area there, right there. Didn't take much effort. You know, people say that the preparations for uh, milled ceramics are so much more aggressive. I disagree. It's just a very subtle rounding of these little transitions make all the difference in the world. Right there. Now we know we can mill that because if I can fit a one millimeter circle out here on the outside portion I know that we can mill it because remember we have to imagine this is milling from the outside in not from the inside out. Press ceramics are made from a wax up that starts on the inside. Milled is out of a block and needs to be carved from the outside. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and continue to smooth the walls. And whenever I have a sharp edge, I'm going to just rile that off just a little bit to make sure that we don't have any areas that would be difficult for the milling burrs to get access to. And at the gingival, let's make that finish line, that margin, absolutely smooth and this is where it's time to move to a different burr because this burr is just not quite capable of getting that perfectly flat okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a different burr for that particular gingival portion but before I do let's just highlight the fact that now we have a smooth transition in here and when the milling burr is trying to negotiate these areas, it'll have no trouble whatsoever. They're all nice and, and, and smooth. You just want to avoid any sharp angles that would be difficult for a one millimeter diameter burr to get access to. So you have to think about it from the outside. Can I draw a little circle right here, this one millimeter diameter, that can negotiate that curve? I sure can. Can I do it over here? These are the areas you have to watch out for. Now down here at the gingival, we're going to go ahead and make this just a little bit smoother. There's a little bump over here that you could certainly press to, but milling to is going to be a little bit more difficult. So that's the reason why I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a burr that has more of a flat end. And this is the 8845 KR. And you notice this has got a really fat, flat end where the previous burr that I was using whether it be the coarse grit or the fine grit that I'm showing you here, it has more of a rounded end. I don't know if you can, can you see that okay? So we're going to go ahead and stay with the, this flat ended. Some people have made comments about utilizing uh, end cutting burrs, and I think those are good too. This is a, a 10 839 uh, burr, also made by Brasser, that's end cutting. You can see that the grit of the burr is right here on the end. So either one of these could be used. I happen to like the um, 845 
8845KR018 because it's um, got the walls that are grit and I can, I can make some modifications to the walls while I'm in there. I can be more efficient. But you certainly could use the other burr. So this isn't going to take much effort and this is clearly an area that you could use a, a slow speed or your electric hand piece on a slower speed. We're using air driven turbines today. I prefer electric hand pieces but um, you can do this with any hand piece you like. And so we're just using the end of the burr in a very feather stroke. Just going across that so lightly. So that, that finish line is as crisp as it can be. So I ask you, is, uh, is the, the millable uh, preparation more aggressive or is it just maybe more refined? And I think that's uh, something that we all have to kind of uh, face when we're doing milled restorations is that it's not a more aggressive preparation. I think it's probably, in my, my opinion, uh, a more refined preparation. Okay, so I want to point out that when we're doing a ceramic preparation for a, a milled restoration, you know, that would be like a chair side milled unit, whether it be your CIRAC or your E4D, your preparation design has to be different than your pressed ceramic preparation. For example, this preparation design would work with any pressed ceramic system. But this would not work for a CIRAC or an E4D milling procedure because these, if this dimension right here is not at least one millimeter, it won't mill. It also cannot mill coming from a wide area into a narrow area like this. So on a CIRAC prep, the modification to this preparation design to make it work for, for a milled restoration would be like this. You'd have to come here and you'd have to come in here. You would remove this area and you would widen that radius there and widen that radius there. So the CIRAC preparation would require those kinds of modifications. They're pretty subtle really, but uh, it's pretty important. The key is that the size of the milling burr that mills the restorations, and this is the diamond mill, this radius, actually I should say this diameter at this point is one millimeter, okay? And we can't have anything on a preparation that's more narrow than that. It won't get milled. It's impossible. So, important to know. So this sharp preparation transition would not work with CIRAC. This one would. Because this burr cannot fit into that little point there. So it won't mill that. And if we look at this drying over here, you can see this inlay design, it meets all the features, uh, the requirements for inlays. Okay, It has good draw, and we can assume that this has good bulk. Uh, it approaches 90 degrees on the exit angles, and it approaches a 90 degree butt joint. Now the Sierra could mill in here just fine, but in this area, if this is one millimeter, if this is a one millimeter diameter burr, the burr cannot get into that little corner there. So that will be unmilled. And so when you go back to cement the restoration, try the restoration in, this area will be overextended. Even though the, the machine will design the restoration to fit into that area, even though the technology 
allow you to mark the margins in that area. You can scan that area. You can't mill that area. And that's a very interesting problem. You can scan it. You can design it. You can, the, you can marginate it. But you cannot mill it. You have to be able to do all of those in order to produce a restoration gear site. So that, that's going to require a slight modification in your preparation design. I think it's an important thing to, talk, to know.